Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the venerable Mang Liao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zheng Kong. Homage to the 16 Dharma King Kamapa. Homage to Master Sakya. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of Homa today. Prabhuta Ratna Tathagata. Sumo. Tutan Siti Rinpoche. All Dharma masters, Dharma educators, <coughs> Dharma teachers, Dharma lecturers, Dharma assistants, temple directors, all disciples present here and over the internet. Our participating VIPs today from the Taiwan government, the Chief Secretary, Mr. Zheng Pei Fu, and Mrs. Zheng. Internet. Our participating VIPs today from the Taiwan at the head, and Dr. Zheng Zhenlong. And the scholars group of Tributa School, the distinguished professor Wang Jingxian. Professor Wang Li. Professor Mai Yin Huang. The distinguished professor Wang Jingxian. Professor Wang Li. Professor Ye Suwen and Dr. Yu Jiang Cheng and Medical Dr. Lin Jin An. And the Worldwide Lotus Charity Society, the President Master Chang Ren. And the president of the Taiwan Area Lotus Light Charity Society, Mr. Li Chunyang. And from the elite international marketing and management uh, president, Mr. Yu. And from the Chiping Furniture Store, the president, Ms. Huang. And uh, President Mr. Yu, my university Saint Classman Zhu Jinsui Xianzhen, Chi Furen Chen Zhexiang. And producers for the Great Perfection Dharma Hevajua Exposition and <coughs> Development Stages of Tantayana, Master Lian Yu, and the host, Dharma Sister Pei Jin. <coughs> Producers for the Gini Dian Sang Xin Deng Dhamma Sister Lebe Ka Shi Ya Chi. And uh, gratitude to the Hua San. Da Sing Art Center and 
auction center for the donation of 100,000 NT dollars for the meals at the temple. <coughs> Auction center for the donation of a hundred thousand NT dollars for the meals at the temple. <laughs> Wish you all prosperity. Good afternoon, everyone. How do you do? Today, here, we did the Homa of Prabhupada Ratna Tathagata. And this deity, Prabhupada is not quite popular of Prabhupada Ratna Tathagata. There is a mention to the Prabhupada Ratna Tathagata. Before Sakyamuni Buddha. So, one of the deity mentioned, and also in Siddhigarbha Deliverance Yoga, it was also mentioned to the Prabhupada Ratna Tathagata. And he is rarely found at other places. When he attained Buddhahood, nobody knew about it, so nobody requested him to stay in the Saha world, and nobody beseeched him to give Dharma teaching, because nobody knew. So quickly, he knew about it, so nobody requested him to stay in the Saha world, and nobody beseeched him to give them. In his vows, that in the future, if there is a person uh, expounding on the Lotus Sutra, when the Lotus Sutra uh, exposition is very wonderful that he would appear. So Sakyamuni Buddha on the Lotus Sutra, when the Lotus Sutra uh, exposition is very Goda of Prabhupada Ratna appeared to the sky. And from inside, the Prabhupada Ratna Tathagata appeared because the discourse on the Lotus Sutra by Sakyamuni Buddha was truly authentic, and the Sutra was a genuine Sutra. So he praised Sakyamuni Buddha discourse on the Lotus Sutra as marvelous that give joy to the hearers <coughs> so that uh, the beings gain the greatest benefits. So Prabhupada Ratna Tathagata praised Sakyamuni Buddha. And at the same time, he gives way uh, of his seat to Sakyamuni Buddha and invited Sakyamuni greatest benefits. So Prabhupada Ratna Tathagata praised Sakyamuni Buddha. Uh, can sit together with Prabhupada Ratna. As you all know, <coughs> so Sakyamuni Buddha uh, spoke on the uh, on the Prabhupada Ratna Tathagata. 
So from then on, everybody should remember that his name, Prabhuta Ratna, which means many jewels or abundant wealth. So he is considered to be a uh, deity for enhancements. So all the primary supplicants for Homa today are truly fortunate that you pray silently to Prabhuta Ratna to bestow whatever treasures you wish for. So all the primary supplicants for Homa today are truly fortunate that you and Prabhuta Ratna, please shower more jewels, uh, more wealth to you, and he would bestow them to you. So Buddhas for enhancements, for enrichments are very rare. So this is the and he would bestow them to you. So Buddhas for enhancements, for enrichments, are or abundant wealth, Tathagata. Typically, talking about wealth and money, everybody likes them, including the countries, families, individuals, all of them love money. So when we decide Om Mani Pet Me Hom, which is the heart mantra of the Chen Resik, or the Four Arm Kuan Yin, the mantra becomes Om Mani Coming Home. <laughs> The recitation by the English speakers, Oh, money coming home. Money, please come to my home. Nobody dislikes money. So, Prabhupada Ratna is a Buddha. <coughs> But he has lots of jewels, so he could bestow wealth and money to sentient beings. So he is a deity of four enhancements. There are four different kinds of deities. One is for purification. They are mostly white. He could bestow wealth and money to sentient beings. So he is a deity of four enhancements. The fortune gods or the wealth deities like the yellow Jamala, red Jamala, green Jamala, white Jamala, black Jamala. Those are the main deities for enhancements and deities for magnetization, for interpersonal relationships. That's typically red deities like Guru Kule, Buddha Mother, or the ferocious Ragaraja. They are considered to be the red deities. And for subjugation, they're the blue deities which is the Vajra deities and protectors. They are typically for subjugation because in our lives all we require is for purification, enhancement, magnetization and subjugation. So that <coughs> that uh, encompasses all human lives, human as life aspects. And the Buddha for enhancements would be Prabhupada Ratna. And the mudra for Prabhupada Ratna is very simple. It's like when you are about to join your palms, but slightly separate, <laughs> but not to great uh, of a distance. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> There's no such mudra. Sometimes So just place your place your hands the mantra. So tatakataya. So this is the mantra and the mudra. Just place it in front of your chest. First visualize and then uh, form the mudra. Visualize and then recite the mantra and the appearance or the look of Prabhupada Ratna is this, the typical Tathagata's appearance or the look of a Buddha and his body is golden yellow and wearing a red uh, Dharma robe so this is very easy to visualize the look of a Buddha with the golden, golden yellow body and wearing the red uh, robe and visualize and form the mudra and recite the mantra. Then become the deity yoga or the yogic practice. <coughs> So, Prabhupada Ratna can bestow abundant wealth upon all of us. Primarily, because he had a vow that he would appear if the person, if anyone, expounds on the Lotus Sutra really well, like Sakyamuni Buddha. So if you can practice Prabhupada Ratna Dharma, because it is rarely known, and he is an um, enhancement deity. So by practicing Prabhupada Ratna, whatever treasure you wish for, uh, you would get it, because not many people are praying to him. So that's the benefit. I remember I've said it before in Montreal, Canada, there was a Catholic church. There was a person there <coughs> that he, he didn't pray to God or to Maria or to like my God is like my God. He didn't pray to God or Maria or Jesus because many people, everybody prayed to them. Many people pray to Jesus. So to the mother or to the son or to God, Jehovah, Jesus, Maria, many people pray to them. But there is someone that is <coughs> that very few people would pray to Joseph, the father of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus' father was a carpenter. And he wasn't Jesus' real father. Maria was Jesus' mother, but she was impregnated by the Spirit. But nowadays, <coughs> uh, in the view of the science, that's not possible. So Jesus' father was called Joseph. 
我们台语叫“要索”啊，“要索”，夜色，还没有人求。这个天主堂的这个。So nobody prays to Joseph. 我们经过天主天主堂的这个出事，一看没有人求这个耶稣的父亲，啊，他干脆就求,求耶稣的父亲。This person realized that nobody prayed to Joseph, so he did. And sure enough, immediately he got great response. Why? Because he was the only one. Praying to him, so Joseph was really pleased that anyone, that someone, prayed to him. Everybody prays to Maria, my girlfriend, or to my son, Jesus, or to God, Jehovah. But nobody prays to Joseph. As soon as someone prays to him. He immediately bestowed him with great power. People are paralyzed or couldn't walk. And as long as he prays to Joseph, the father of Jesus, and then bless that person, the person could walk down. They came with the walking stick, but when they left, they can walk without walking sticks. So at that church, there were lots of walking sticks hanging there. So that was how responsive it was. So the, the Vatican, the Vatican <laughs> thought. Oh my God! This is definitely a uh, this must be uh, problematic. What evil is that? So the Vatican sent sent someone to check on this because they wondered what happened, how could that happen? It turned out because he prayed to Joseph. So now if you pray to Prabhupada Ratna, then uh, you would be in luck. Talking about money, the one who prays for money the most is the Yellow uh, Emperor Temple, Li Zhang Temple. They always talk about money, money, more money. That money that is. <coughs> uh, <coughs> that cannot uh, be spent. And uh, we will transmit the Tai Sang Xin Jun, the Great Supreme Lord. As I said, the richest one on earth is the mountain god, and all the <coughs> treasures come from the earth. So the Prabhupada Ratna Pagoda, where is it? I went to Chongju in Korea. At the temple there, I saw a Prabhupada Ratna stupa that was made by a human being. But the real Prabhupada Ratna Pagoda was underground. When you give marvelous Dharma teaching or experience, Discourses on sutras, then the pagoda would rises from the ground to the sky. Huh? Oh, so this is the the divine lord of Tai San. He would be the richest and the, f the richest mountain god. 
and the four heavenly kings are on the halfway up the Mount Meru and they are also considered to be mountain gods too. So all mountain gods are very rich. Why? Because all the treasures and jewels come from the earth. Gold, diamonds, silver, bronze, copper, all the metals, all the building materials, cars, expensive cars, Ferraris, Lamborghinis. They all come from the great earth, the metals, <coughs> the trees, the plastics, all the building materials, they all come from the earth. So when you own land, buildings, expensive cars, real estate properties, they all belong to the earth. And in the ocean, the dragon gods are the riches, and on the earth, the mountain gods are the riches. And of the highest realm, the richest one would be Prabhupada Ratna Tathagata, or the Buddha of many jewels or abundant wealth. So at the Yellow Emperor Temple, the Grandmaster will be talking on the Tai San Divine Lord. Tai San is the name of a mountain. Where is it? Tai San is in the Shantung province in mainland China. So that's considered the eastern mountain because the, the mountain is divided into four areas. So Taishan, Mountain Taishan, or the Eastern Mountain, <coughs> is in, in charge of the yin and yang uh, living beings. And also, hmm? So the Tai San Xing Jin or Dong Yi Da Di, the great emperors of the eastern mountain, they are all the same. And they are very unique, and I will talk about them at the Yellow Emperor uh, Lei Zhang Temple in Taoyuan on February 21st, a Sunday, which is the 14th of the first lunar month at 1.30 p.m., 1.30 p.m. in Taoyuan. So if you want to change your luck, then you need to register yourself. <laughs> That's the ad talking about wealth. <laughs> oh, money coming home. <coughs> this money or wealth uh, is not the focus of spiritual cultivators or the ordained monks and nuns. But in reality, even for spiritual cultivators, if you have no money, how can you have temples? <laughs> if you have no money, how can you have Fo Guang San temple? If you have no money, how can you have Zhong Tai Chan Si? Right? If you have no money, where 
Can you have Cixi? We have the whole the assets of Tributor School is not even as small as the interest of Cixi Foundation because uh, it was in the news the assets that Cixi had we, but the assets of Tributa School does not even reach the end number of Cixi's assets. Uh, in Taiwan, we have the four great Buddhist mountains, and one, and the, the last one was Huaku. So if you have no money, how could you have Huaku San? Every time we drive on the Sizeng Road <coughs> in the seventh district of Taizong City, there is a chapter of the Huagu Temple. Just that building. So if you pass by there, Sizeng Road, Sizeng Road. There is the Hua Gu San of the Taizong District. <coughs> and guess how much that would be? It would be over hundreds of millions NT dollars, even just for one floor. And then count how many floors they have and then the land, to see how big the land is and how, how tall the building is. <coughs> Thinking about <laughs> other people's money and our own money. <laughs> it's unavoidable that we feel a little bit the richest man in the world is Bill Gates of America. When he built uh, the place where Microsoft Campus now is, I had been there before. And I did say that this is a piece of land that would belong to the richest man of the world. At that time, it was just woods. But now, it's amazing. And also around it, it now becomes Microsoft company. And Bill Gates truly is the richest man in the world. <coughs> and Siad Lejang Temple is a, 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 a little bit down toward the lake from Microsoft campus. So the fact that we can attract and deliver so many sentient beings is because of the geomancy, the qi, the energy of that piece of land flow toward the Siad Lejang Temple. At that time, I did say that that piece of land o over the hill, on top of the hill, belongs to the richest man in the world or anyone that occupies that piece of land would be the richest man of the world. And many disciples heard that at that time. Mm. So, but <coughs> Grandmaster did recognize that that piece of land uh, would be uh, would belong to the richest man of the world. 
or anyone owning that piece of land would be the richest man of the world. But we don't pursue wealth. Many people do pursue wealth. They live in their lives for money. However, what is what is definition of being rich? Or it's very difficult to say. You know, in Taiwan, the richest one is Ge Tai Ming, or maybe not necessarily. Tai Jia, the Tai family, also has lots of money. Or the Huang family combined would be very rich too, and many other families. Like Fermi. Fermi Wong, please stand up. His family clan in the past in Taipei was also wealthy clan, right? Is that a thank you, Grandmaster, for your blessing? Very smart. There are many rich people. So what is the difference of being rich be, between the rich man and the poor man? That's late. That's difficult to say sometimes. Say like Ge Tai Ming from Taiwan, if he goes to Philippines or Europe or Greece, and you say, I'm Ge Tai Ming, Mr. Ge. They don't recognize you. Or you go to Africa and you say, I'm Ge Tai Ming. Do they recognize you? No. Or you go to Iceland and you say, I'm Ge Tai Ming. Do they recognize you? Yeah, the Taiwanese may recognize you, but not overseas. Or the richest one in China would be known among the mainland Chinese. But in Taiwan, we don't necessarily know. So do you know who's the richest one in Japan? No. Watakushi wa wakaranai. We don't know. And who is the richest one in the Philippines? No. And who is richest in Mexico? We don't know. Jensen wakaranai. <coughs> we really don't know. We really don't know. Right? <laughs> so, what is rich or what is not? Just don't talk about it. So, it's enough for you to use. And you have some leftover, some savings, that's good enough. So it's basically, it's enough for you to use. And there's some leftover, then you should be very content. So you shouldn't have too much desires as spiritual cultivations. But people still live for money. So most people do. Almost all people do. We have a joke here. The doctor asks, so how was the medicine I prescribed earlier? Did it help? Yes, wonderful. My uncle, my uncle thought it was his, 
drugs, and then he took it and left the world, and now I am his heir, uh, and he became really rich. He took it and left the world, and now I am here. And went to a doctor and said, Is there any medicine to make her smarter? And the doctor gave her some medicine. And the lady came back three weeks later and said, It's useless. And then he increased the doses. And then the lady said, You know, I feel uh, cheated because your medicine didn't work. And then the doctor said, Oh, now be, you're becoming smarter. So what did the doctor want? Money. Someone got appendicitis, but he didn't want to have any surgery. So his family uh, sent him to the doctor. Someone got appendicitis, but he didn't want to have any surgery. If uh, human beings don't have appendix, appendices, then how would the doctors earn money to buy luxurious homes, cars, and send the, uh, his children overseas? So you need money to go see doctors. So please let me tell you, <coughs> luxurious homes, cars, and send the, uh, his children overseas. So you need money to go see doctors, members of the Nanhan, South Korea. They would. Uh, from Taiwan, Thailand, Thailand. The monks from Thailand, uh, you can buy little ghost. They use <coughs> oil, and they use the aborted babies or miscarriage little babies, and they would soak them in oils. And they use some kind of uh, spells to get the spirits of that baby spirits. So like miscarriage little babies, and they would soak them in oils, and they and then they soak them in oils. Those are actually little ghosts. Or they place some teeth or bone powder, powdered bones, or the powdered bones of the holy people, and they sell those stuff in Thailand. <coughs> and what are they for? For protection and they can also help you make money. So if you keep the little girls, then you would uh, make a lot of money. So have you heard of that? Money. So if you keep the little ghost, <coughs> so that is like uh, nurturing, uh, like keeping little ghosts. So of course it is effective, however, uh, you would uh, 
be filled uh, with the energies of the ghost. You know, then you make offerings to the ghost. Ghost. So, of course, it is effective. However, uh, you would uh, be filled. Uh, it has no advantages to spiritual cultivation, and moreover, it would harm you because you would be reborn onto the realms of the ghost because you make vows or you make promises to the ghost. So mutual agreement between you and the ghost, you make offering to the ghost and the ghosts help you so that what you want would be fulfilled. Like I want to buy that house and you tell the little ghost, please, I want to buy that house and there were people living there and the little ghosts uh, would uh, bother them every day, every night and would uh, <coughs> press on them during their sleeps so they get sick or they get really bothered and upset. People living there and the little ghosts uh, would uh, bother them why don't you move? And then, of course, they sell to that person who raised the little ghost. So they would have such power. So if you have a business, that little ghost would, would uh, drag you in. So even when you don't have anything to buy, all of a sudden you just turn and get into the shop. Although you don't want to buy those, but uh, you know, without realizing, it, you know, without really conscious of it, you buy that, and then you got home and said, "Oh, why did I buy that?" So that's because you were influenced by the ghost. So. That's how you can earn money by raising or keeping little ghosts. So you communicate with those ghosts. And of course, it's quite responsive. Ghost. So that's how you can earn money by raising or keeping little ghosts. So you can. There's an announcement by the Trukuda Foundation that smoke offerings should only be done at your own home for your karmic creditors, those that you owe from the past lives, so that to make them happy and they would uh, help you. What is this? So it's the same as making offerings to the ghost and your karmic creditors those that you owe from the past lives so that to make them happy and they would uh, help you would uh, would uh, it's, it's there to protect and support you because you recite Om Mani Bay Me Home so she would uh, protect you, set the boundary and you would not be bothered because the main deity is Chandrasik. So smoke offering was transmitted through the Tibetan Tantrayana. And I have the practice procedure, the sadhana, that was transmitted by Dutan Nima, Dutan Thali, and Dutan Torji to Dutan Chimo, which is me. So the smoke offering practice procedure it's at home. Did I give it to you? Yes. Now it's at Master Lian Ling's the practice procedure. So the smoke offering practice procedure the lineage gurus and the deity is the Chenresik, the four-arm Guan Yin Bodhisattva which is the key deity for smoke offering. So Tutan Nima was the one that compiled the, uh, the 
Bazangjinte uh, Tripitaka during the Emperor Qianlong of Ming Dynasty. So now I transmit it to Master Lianin. So this is a lineage. And how about the practice procedure for Kala Chakra? It's also at you. Yes, it's also with him. So please let me tell you that this really important smoke offering dharma that I that Grandmaster transmitted was with him. him. So please let me tell you that this really important smoke offering. So whether at chapters or temples, practicing the smoke offering together is fine. It's allowed, although Tribuda Foundation announced it's not allowed. I found that, but if you perform the group practice at the temple or chapters, Although Tribuda Foundation announced it's not allowed, I found that creditors are not just the solitary and foreign ghosts, then it's fine. Because you repay the debt of your past lives to all your karmic creditors. So when you repay all your debts, then you increase your own luminosity and you would increase your own merits and uh, good fortunes, then you would gain wealth because karmic creditors are obstructing you and when the obstructions disappear, that's the same as you're being helped. So smoke offering dharma is very important, primarily for your, for your own karmic creditors. But you don't want to make offerings to the foreign ghosts at cemeteries. Because, of course, you make offerings to this foreign or unrelated ghost, and you, of course, you would receive great responses because the ghosts, all the ghosts, would uh, come and follow you. And because it's uh, no boundaries, which means that everyone can come. And that can only be done by Mahasiddha, the one with great attainment. That you make the offerings to all the ghosts with no boundary. So, with no boundary. But look, Grandmaster, in performing the Homa, five offering ceremony still has to set the boundary. But is there any practitioners that would do that with no boundary? Almost none. So in Taoism too. So it's done by all the uh, masters of the temple to perform together. So when you take the smoke offering urn to the cemetery, of course you would gain response and strong response even. Some disciples told me that when I burned it at the cemetery, it's really strong response. That means you're connecting, connected with the ghost. And of course, the response is quick and strong. And there may be lights uh, in the photos that you take, uh, but the lights are muddled and fuzzy. Those are the lights of the ghost. So if you burn it at the cemeteries, that's the dharma to offer to the ghost that in the future, when you're reincarnated, you would become a ghost because the ghosts will always follow you. They always want your offerings and you need to offer 
to the ghost, and then the ghost would help you. And then you offer, and then you help, and then in the future you would be eaten by the ghost. So when you perform smoke offerings at the ceremonies, you will definitely bring the ghost home with you. And of course you would receive responses would uh, make you feel so sweet and then they becoming more and more greedy, they got bigger and bigger appetites and then you would be eaten up by the ghost. So if you make the offerings properly, then you would benefit from it, but if not, then you would definitely suffer. Calamities. So Kaohsiung is my homeland and Pingtong is my second homeland. I went to Tonggang, Wenwu Wangye Miao, which is um, a temple of the both uh, peaceful and wrathful deities. So in order to make the offering ceremonies in the Taoism, the whole Tonggang area had to be on the vegetarian meals for three days. Huh? So that's for the uh, uh, the grand offering ceremony for for the numerous people. It's the dragon boat. <coughs> so all the precious items uh, placed on the boats for the ghosts of the ocean. So the, like the universal offering, we need lots of masters, all the masters to do it together, to recite the sutras in order to be able to perform this broad or universal offering. It's not to be done by uh, typical people. Not just a typical person can send off the dragon boat offering. It's called the burning of the king god boat, king boat. It's not to be done haphazardly. It has to be done with the proper procedure by many people, many masters together. And I'm familiar with two people. When I was 27, I performed surveying, land surveying. I was in charge of Muzha, Muzha district of Taipei. So during the development plan, so I live in the temple there in Muza Jiin Temple. And I made offering to two gods. One is Zhang Xun, one is Xu Yuan. Xu Yuan is Bao Yi Da Fu. And I stayed there for two months in order to perform the service on the Muza district. Huh? And because something from the temple was stolen, huh? or the donation box, so the temple called the medium, and that was dancing. And Zhang Xun and Xu Yuan came out and told me 
there someone stayed at the temple called Seng Yan Lu. You go find him, the media, the medium said, go find him, and then he would be able to help find the donation box. So Zhang Xun and Xu Yuan asked me to find the donation box. So I consulted and found that the person who stole the donation box on what day, what time, he would come back to the temple and return the donation box. And surely enough, they caught the thief on, on that predicted time and date. So was it responsive? Yes. So Grandmaster knows Zhang Xun and Xu Yuan, these two holy people. Because I lived, I stayed at the tem temple for two months because I did the whole, the survey of the whole land. <laughs> like a bra, a couple of mountains that look like bras. And around them, I did all the survey. And then at night, I would sleep at the temple at the Muza district. At when I was 27, I did write this in the book, but not about catching the thief. It's not in the, on the internet, but I checked the books because I did help Xu, Zhang Xun and Xu Yuan. Uh, Zhang Xun uh, obtained a high official position, and Xu Yuan uh, was a mayor of a, a town, Sui Chen. Zhang Xun, during the Tang Dynasty, uh, the turmoil, Zhang Xun instead helps Xu Yuan to, uh, uh, to, uh, to take control of the Suayang town, city, Suayang Chen. So Zhang Xun and Xu Yuan are very loyal, loyal and upright, and stayed until the whole city was uh, devastated, that all the people died, because the two of them were, were very loyal and upright. So they were uh, they were uh, recognized to be gods. So, Bao uh, Yu, Zhang Xun was Bao Yu. So, who are most familiar with Zhang Xun and Xu Yuan? That's me. Because I, I stayed there for two months and I made offerings to Zhang Xun and Xu Yuan for two months. So when I, when I give blessings on the heads and they shine lights and Zhang Xun and Xu Yuan actually uh, revealed me as the Guru. So this is all uh, truthful. Yang 
So uh, by keeping little goals, you can earn money. But eventually, you would fall into the goals of the realms. So today, if you make offerings to the gods, then you would go to the realm of the gods. If you make offerings to the sages, then you would go to the realm of the sages. If you make offerings to the bodhisattvas, you would go to the bodhisattvas realm. If you make offerings to the Buddhas, then you would go to the realms of the Buddhas. <laughs> if you make offerings to Grandmaster, then we would go to the realm of Grandmaster. And the lineage Dharma flow comes from Vairokana Buddha, Amitabha, and uh, Padma Kumara, and Living Buddha, Lian Xiong, Sun Yan Lu. So if you make offerings to Grandmaster Lu, then you would return and you would go to the realm of Vairokana Buddha. So that to let you know about the society that from the ghost and then gods and bodhisattvas, gods. So if you want to perform smoke offerings together with other people at the temples or chapters, that would be fine. Oh, money, Benny, home.